Hi, welcome back to Gadgets and Toys. Today I'm going to do a direct comparison between Mount Fuji and Mount Kinabalu. When I was choosing my first mountain to climb, I shortlisted these two. Reason being that one of them is nearest to Singapore and is one of the highest in the Southeast Asia. The other one is in my favourite country. I did quite a bit of homework trying to compare between the two. Even though I found a lot of material and information on either one of them, but there was never a direct comparison between them. I will only be talking about the most popular and easy trail for both mountains to keep the comparison fair. So first off, Fuji on the left, Kinabalu on the right. Mount Fuji stands at 3776 meters, Kinabalu at 4096 meters. So for Fuji Yoshida Trail starting off from Subaru Line Fuel Station is at a starting height of 2300 meters. Elevation gain is only 1476 meters and the whole trail is about 6 km long. Whereas for Kinabalu, the Timpo Horn Trail starts at 1,866 meters, a much more elevation gain of 2,230 meters, and the trail split into two parts is 8.7 km long. Mount Fuji has a climbing season from as early as beginning of July to mid September. This window is mainly due to the snowfall. You don't need to have any type of permit, you just drop by and climb at any time during the climbing season and you're allowed to stay however long you want. Kinabalu requires you to get a permit and a guide is a must. That's the rule of the park. They have different package of different route, different activities, usually two to three days. Because of the earthquake that happened a few years ago, you're not allowed to overstay on the mountain. Summit attack on the second part of the climb. There's a checkpoint in the middle. If you don't reach there by a certain time, you have to turn back. They will not allow you to carry on. The expense are as follow. Basically, you are just going there on your own, free and easy. This is just purely as a climbing expedition and not going shopping or anything. A lot from the airport, go straight to Mount Fuji. Depending on how long you want to take to climb and come down, these are all the breakdowns. Easily between 1,300 to 2,000 in total. But for Mount Kinabalu, because of the distance between Singapore and Malaysia, the air tickets are relatively low. Everything is included in the package depending on which one you take but most of them will include a land transport to and from airport, and accommodation and the last would be the agent fee for the guides and so on. Comes out to be 800 to 1005. If you go in a larger group under one guide, it will be much cheaper because the cost of the guide would be spread across and also because you can book a bigger room with more bait and that will come down in price too. Okay now just briefly on the difficulty of the mountains. I'm glad I chose Mount Fuji as the first mountain to climb. I've climbed twice different speed. Once was straight up to the peak within the day and rest at the top for sunrise. The other time with my wife I spent two nights and only climbed during the daytime. Fuji was quite manageable and easy to climb. But Kinabalu, in my experience, I felt that it's three times more difficult because of the distance and the elevation gain. If you still feel that you want to give Kinabalu a try first, just be cautious that it's going to be very tough. Please do not underestimate the difficulty. Mount Fuji is basically a volcano, so it will be constant upslope and you have no cover from the elements in whatsoever. Rain, wind, sun, everything will be on your back the whole way. Prepare sunscreen, sunblock, plenty of waters and some warm clothing. But for Mount Kinabalu, you have a lot of trees, a lot of greens everywhere. For the first part of the climb, which is 6 km, you'll be in the dense forest, shield from all the elements, the wind, and sometimes light rain. It's only at the second part, you'll be totally exposed. For Mount Fuji, there's not much of steps, more rocks, and some slope with loose gravel and sand. So you have to be careful by the lake gator to prevent the sand and rocks from going to your shoes. But for Mount Kinabalu, expect a lot of stairs. It's more tedious because of climbing the stairs and it's more steeper in most part. For first timer, no matter which mountain you choose, please take plenty of waters and food along the way. Eat along the way, not one hard full meal, split it up 
as and when you feel like eating and you need the extra burst of energy and more importantly do not rush take it at your own pace do not burn out or tire out yourself don't worry about other people being faster than you make sure that it's comfortable for you so that you can have a steady pace to reach the peak okay so that's my view and my experience between the two mountains i hope it's useful and the information here can provide you with more insight of how to plan for the trip okay happy climbing guys bye